What's up, everybody? It's Gibby with Pack Addicts Northwest, and it is Memorial Day weekend. Hope everyone is looking forward to a couple days off and enjoying the nice warm weather wherever you guys live and um, some barbecues and time with the with friends and family. Um, it's been about a month since I last posted uh, that last select God box that was out there. Um, what you're going to see over the next couple weeks from Curtis and myself is posting some videos about PSA. Um, for the first time ever, I submitted last year a uh, huge bulk economy order. So this video today is all about showing you the process, the costs, what I got back. This is as I was kind of really getting into the hobby and wanting to grade things for the first time. So you're going to see this video today. Also, over the last month, since kind of football died down and there hasn't been a lot of new wax products that we've, uh, Curtis and I have wanted to dive into, um, Mike on the mic's doing the baseball scene and he's got videos coming out. But for Curtis and I, we're kind of in this lull for a few months. And so what we wanted to do was uh, start getting into some singles. And so we'll create a video each probably in the next couple of weeks just to highlight some of our big purchases that we've been making on the side just to bolster up our slabs and our graded collection. So that's pretty cool. So look forward to that. Um, but today, it's all about going over my 100 card bulk PSA order. First time ever. Um, so I, this is all brand new to me. I look forward to going through every single card with you guys. A um, couple stats right off the bat. Um, I mailed this back in August, August 13th of 2020. Just got it back two days ago. Okay, so it took about two months to enter it into the system. So mailed it in August 13th, didn't even get entered into PSA submission and like their portal until mid-October. So that was like very stressful, me never not knowing even how the process works. Every day I'm checking to see if it was delivered and it just says it had arrived, but not really like entered into their system. So two months went by and then finally I got an email from PSA saying that they received it. Um, at that point, that's when the clock starts and it took nine months and 13 days from door to door to get these back. But man, am I excited. And so today I'm going to be going over every single one of the cards from the submission. Uh, but first, I felt like it was kind of cool. Um, Curtis and I, Mike, <clears throat> I think we like to look at like the financial aspects and kind of some of the statistics about uh, the card hobby. And so I created up a bunch of just instead of inserting in images, I just felt like I would <laughs> create some charts and show you guys um, kind of the stats and how this order breaks down just so you guys can better understand um, some of the grades and some of the different eras that we're about to look at today. So um, to, to get started, um, this submission consisted of 100 cards, but two of them actually didn't grade. And I'll go through those in a second. But so really the graded cards I got back were there was 98 of them. And here's how they break down by era. Okay, so for vintage cards, I had 20 cards on the far left-hand side. Right in the middle, I had 13 cards that were kind of that junk wax era, kind of the 80s to 90s. And again, vintage is kind of those World War II to the right till the junk wax era starts in the mid 80s, so 40s to 80s. Junk wax is 86 to 94. And then most of my cards were from the modern era. Uh, this These cards, most of which I had... Uh, pulled when I was a kid growing up for the first time. Some of these aren't in good shape. Um, and some of them uh, were more recent, you know, the, the kind of 2010 to current as I was pulling them and putting some nice ones aside. So 65 of the cards in this order today are for the modern era, which is 95 to, to present. Um, <clears throat> here's a breakdown of the overall grades that I got on this submission. So I think what you're gonna see is a wide range, okay? All the way from threes, all the way up to tens. So even though it's really cool to see that a majority were within the nine to tens, okay? 36% were nines, 28% were tens. Something to consider is that, again, because I had three different eras of cards in here, I think the stats right down at the bottom in terms of the percentages are a little skewed. You might go, whoa, he got all the way down to three, fours, fives, and sixes. Yep, but also because most of those were from the different eras. Now, however, we're gonna see a couple in here that I completely whiffed on, and I'm gonna have to probably really do some deep diving into figuring out what happened, but that's the overall breakdown of this submission. And then 
I figured because, again, there was such a spread between the different eras, I figured I would break it out then by group. So within the vintage cards alone, the cards from 45 to 85, I really only had kind of that, and this is what you would expect, kind of that low end of grades, kind of three through six, most of which landed in the fours and fives, um, and but kind of the low end. But those are the cards that you're grading over time and just hoping to get them slabbed and secured, and those lower grades still hold really solid value. Okay. <clears throat> Junk wax era, mid-tier. Okay, so from the 80s to the 90s, where there was a lot of bulk cards, um, you started to move up the grading scale, so to speak. I had a four in there, had a lot of sixes, um, but really I still had a, a good quantity of nines in there as well. Okay, 30% or 31% were sixes, 46% were nines. So the spread starts to shift a little bit to the right in terms of the grades, but still kind of that middle tier of how, how I was getting grades. No tens. Okay, and then last, here's, here's all the modern cards. Okay, look at that. I actually whiffed on some sixes and sevens. These were 95s to present. Um, what's funny is those uh, sixes and sevens, not all ones that were from the 90s. You know, some of them were brand new um, and you'll see that. So I must have missed something on the surface that, um, you know, or a corner or an edge. Uh, but for the most part, a lot of these uh, actually surprised me. Okay, these again were a lot of cards that I picked up as I was a kid growing up. And to see that amount of nines and tens from this era, super happy about that. 45% were nines, 42% were tens. So all in all, I'm really surprised and really happy with how the grades came back. So without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so I'm gonna start pulling each one of these stacks. Um, go through them. First one up is an Aussie Smith, numbered out of 99. Um, the other thing to caveat is, starting with this card, there's probably 10 or 15 cards in here that I don't know why I sent. Now that I look back on it, probably not cards that I would send in again. This was, again, my first time ever doing this. Uh, figured I would send probably the nicest cards I had. The cost was pretty low, but I think that's also what led to the huge back times at PSA. So moving forward, I'll probably just be sending in some pretty high-end cards only. So first card, 2020 Topps Chrome, Ozzy Smith. Uh, I thought this was cool because it was a silver, it was chrome, um, but it was also a game used memorabilia. Instead of just like player used during like a practice or like an exhibition, it was actually game used. Okay, so got that to a nine. Next up, we have a Jordan Alvarez, Freshman Flash. Oh, and that uh, Ozzy Smith was a pop one. Uh, and this is also a pop one. So again, kind of funny because that's what I think you're gonna see is some of these cards, like you probably, they're cool, um, it's nice that I got a nine on this, Jordan Alvarez, Freshman Flash, but seeing that it's a pop one, it's almost like, darn it, you know, that just shows you that the market and industry was not, was not, uh, behind this card. Okay, third up, Fernando Tatis Jr., rookie, really cool. This is one of his staples right now, so I was obviously hoping for a 10 on this one, but got a nine this is his 2019 tops. Um, I also wrote down some values too on all these two with current comps within the last week. So this is an at the the grades that I got. So right now this is valued at 75 bucks. <clears throat> Next up, Pete Alonzo. There's a couple different versions of this. Um, this is the no sock showing version from 2019 tops that got a gem mint 10 on this. Valued at 40 bucks. Okay, another Pete Alonzo. Uh, this one is not called No Sock Showing, so you can see the different little variation right down there. Uh, this was at a nine. This is currently valued at 20 bucks. Next up, we had a Vlad Guerrero. This is from, let's see here, 97. So yeah, this is from when I was a kid, just part of the collection of uh, Vlad Guerrero Sr. <laughs> uh, rookie card, six. You know, so you look at this and you can see a little bit of fraying at the, or just a folding of, on the bottom. But overall, I mean, look at the corners and edges. I feel like that's pretty good. And even with centering, again, just kind of whiffed on that, I guess. That's a six. Um, current comp on a six on that's only five bucks. Okay, next up, 
uh, a Griffey, 89. Not the Griffey rookie, but it is still a rated rookie. Also, not so good. I can see, again, this was from my collection growing up. I can see the corners were a little dinged up down in there on the bottom left. Uh, so I got a six on this. Um, but again, some of these were just me making the decision and knowing that they weren't going to be perfect, but just wanted to get them slabbed and essentially immortalized. Okay, we're going to have to hop off this six train pretty soon. This was a Greg Maddox. Rated rookie. Also a six. Okay, so at least we're getting these out of the way early, right? 1987, Don Ross, Greg Maddox. Obviously, issues up on the top. Um, little issue down there on the bottom left. Um, wasn't sure. Again, first time really kind of going through these. Now I understand how they grade a lot better. Uh, the back looks really good, so it's really just the front, especially on the black. Uh, current comp on that's about 15 bucks. Uh, the next one, this one's pretty cool. Christian McCaffrey, rated rookie. Gem Mint 10. Okay, so this is an optic rated rookie. This is valued at $185. <clears throat> Randy Johnson. Don Russ, 89, rated rookie, six. Another card that I'd had for a long time growing up. I thought this one might have been maybe around the eight level. Um, you see a little chipping, a little uh, soft corners. It just goes to show you during this junk wax era, there's so many in the population that there's obviously a lot better out there. Um, so, you know, again, seeing this at a six, the value is just almost nothing. I think this is like five bucks, it said. So not worth anything, but cool card. <clears throat> 2011 Panini Playoff Contenders, Mike Trout, rookie. Pretty cool. Um, this graded at an eight, which darn it, you know, but again, growing up with this card, pretty sweet. Um, got this at an eight, so it's currently valued at $200. Next up, we got Chris Bryant. It's called the 2015 Tops Chris Bryant Close Up to a nine, valued at 30 bucks. Okay, next up we got a Bryce Harper Future Stars. This is one of his rookies to a nine. I think I can tell right now it's a little off center left to right, a little thin on the left, a little thicker on the right. Um, this is still valued at $40. Um, what's interesting is I thought it would be valued a little bit more, even if it's at a nine. It's a pop one. It's the only one out there. Surprising to me. <clears throat> Next up, Alex Rodriguez. This one was kind of cool. Um, it was essentially, a, a, I think it's from Topps Tribute, uh, but it's got two different sections from when he was on the Mariners and the Yankees. Silver transition relics to a nine. I thought that was just a slick card, and he used to play for the Mariners. or Seattle fans up here with Pack Addicts Northwest. Uh, only pop two on this, but at a nine. Only shows that comps are at 20 bucks. <clears throat> Next up, we've got Michael Jordan, 1991 Upper Deck, Michael Jordan, PSA 9. Pretty cool image right there. Um, this is valued at $110 out of 9. Next up, we've got Manny Machado, rookie, two and nine. Um, this is valued at 25 bucks, a lot lower than what I would have thought. Also, got caveat, uh, everyone listening, um, I'm going to be probably putting about 90% of these cards up on my eBay store. So if any of you guys are interested, just leave a uh, comment and let me know if you're interested. Um, willing to take some deals uh, direct with you guys on PayPal, friends and family or Venmo if you guys want. But a lot of these will be going to uh, fans out there. Um, next one up is a 1969 Hank Aaron. Love the vintage cards. 
Um, this is valued at a three, but again, these old vintage cards hold their value really well. This PSA three is uh, right at uh, about $60. Next up, kind of so you can see the back first. <clears throat> Next up, we have a 1963 Mickey Mantle, valued at a two, or sorry, graded at a 2.5. This was the lowest one that I got, which kind of sucks because I feel like it's, I mean, yeah, you can certainly see the corners. That's the way a lot of the vintage looks, but um, maybe it's because there's a little maybe pen over there or discoloration on the side. So this was at a 2.5, but 2.5s are currently going for $300. It's probably one I'll end up keeping. Um, next up, we've got another uh, Mickey Mantle. This one's called World Series Game 3 Mantle's Clutch Home Run. This is graded at a five. This is valued at $100. Next up, we've got Juan Soto starting to move into his rookie card. This is a Topps Chrome update uh, valued at a 10, and this is uh, at $200 for current comps. Real sweet. Uh, another one that I probably wouldn't have sent in now moving forward, you know, but I got this last year, 2020 Topps Chrome Inception, or sorry, 2020 Tops Inception, Robel Garcia, rookie to a 10, pop one. <laughs> There's the first indication. Uh, this is a PSA 10, valued at about $40. Cool looking card though. Okay, let's move into stack number two. Now we start moving into the Luis Roberts. Okay, this is a 2020... Uh, Tops Chrome 1985 Tops Edition Gem Mint 10. So that's sweet. Uh, this is currently valued at 80 bucks. Next up, we got another Freshman Flash, like you saw earlier, but this one's for Luis Robert. Graded to a 10. Uh, this one's valued at about $45. We got another 2020 Topps Chrome, Gavin Lux, rookie. This is graded to a nine. Um, you can see kind of a little off-centering, a little thin left, a little thicker on the right. So that's probably what got it because the corners and edges on this are pristine. Um, so this got a nine, currently valued at 20 bucks. Would have thought that that would still be a little higher. <clears throat> This one's pretty cool. I love Diamond Kings. Uh, this is 2020 Panini Diamond Kings, Luis Robert, uh, rookie from last year. I just like the canvas look of these and kind of like the artistry of them. Um, this is uh, Gem Mint 10. So this is at around $60 right now. Okay, I think this is the last Luis Robert that I have, 2020 Tops 2030. Gem Mint 10, which is cool with the sparkling in the light. Uh, this one is valued at $40. Okay, got all my stats behind me on the computer screen. I got to scroll up real quick. Okay, there we are. Now we're going to get back into some more vintage. Uh, we've got Don Drysdale. Okay, this is a 1965 PSA 4. Uh, this one is valued at $30. Next up, we got a 1960 uh, Tops Don Drysdale at a four. This is valued at 40 bucks. I like these cards. Next up, we got a 2001 Fleer Authority Barry Larkin. This is probably one of the first ones that I got. This is, again, I grabbed this raw back in the day when I was a kid. Uh, 
2001, probably one of the first ones that was like a game worn jersey. So I just thought that was really cool. Barry Larkin's obviously a stud, um, amazing player in baseball history. And so uh, for me, felt like it was worth getting graded. Came back at an eight, uh, currently valued at 25 bucks. Next up, 2010 Tops Frank Thomas. Um, thought this was cool. Again, kind of going back to that 2010 time frame, or sorry, the early 2000s. Um, you know, I was grabbing these, and these are the first times I was really starting to see game-worn materials. So thought it was in pretty good shape. Came back at nine, which is pretty cool. Uh, this one is valued at like $30, and it's pop one. Okay, now we start moving into some basketball that I got last year. This is 2019 uh, Zion from Chronicles. This is his rookie. Graded at a Gem Mint 10. Pretty sweet. Valued at $100. Next up, we've got another Zion. This is from Chronicles as well. I believe this is Luminance. Yep. Yep, Zion Luminance. Uh, this was valued at a nine, um, valued at uh, $35. I just love the Luminance photos because they're always getting like crazy dunks. Okay, next up, we've got John ja Morant. He is awesome right now. He is just having such an amazing year, especially now that we're in the playoffs. Chronicles, John ja Morant, Recon, valued at a, or uh, graded to a 10. This is at 70 bucks, current comps. Next up, another Chronicles, John Morant. <clears throat> this is XR from that Chronicles XR uh, to pink. And this is at a nine, current comp is $20. See, so like I'm gonna be selling these for current comps and I feel like for 20 bucks to get a parallel John Morant rookie. Yep. Uh, next up, we got another Zion from Chronicles. To a 10. This is Zion's Recon. To a 10. Uh, this is 75 bucks. Another one of my favorite Chronicles products or packs from within Chronicles 2019 Zion. It's Flux. Wish I got this to a 10. I have another one that I just found in one of my piles I totally forgot about. I was laughing with Curtis about this the other day, so I dropped it off at his house because uh, I'm going to get that one graded. Hopefully, I can get a 10. So this one's at a 9, um, valued at 60 bucks. Okay, got a Rui Hachimura. Uh, one of the reasons why I like collecting him is he went to Gonzaga, so home state, you know, Washington State. Gonzaga, obviously huge basketball powerhouse. Uh, and I love Crusade, so I thought that was really cool and got a 10 out of this. Uh, it's weird, though, that for, for Rui and Crusade and Gem Mint 10, only 20 bucks. So pretty low, good value play right there. Uh, next up, RJ Barrett from Chronicles. You could tell I was buying lots of Chronicles, right? Uh, PSA 10. This is from Phoenix. Also love this product. Um, this is valued at $50. Okay, next up is RJ Barrett uh, for Illusions to a 10. And this is valued at 75 bucks. These videos are kind of cool watching these or just going through every single card. This is maybe the first or second time. I was literally just like pop these out of the box, kind of sorted them really quick, and then we're doing this video. So it's pretty cool for, I'm seeing these kind of for the first time with you guys. Um, I kind of forgot how faded this back is. Normally on really high-end cards, you can actually see the comic book right there. But uh, either way, this is a 1960 Tops Bart Star. Okay, this is graded to a five. Uh, thought it would be, uh, you know, worth a little bit more than that, but still a super cool uh, player. An old vintage card, 40 bucks. Next up, 1964 uh, Philadelphia 
Jim Brown, graded to a four. This is at $105. <laughs> Look at that team photo back then. That's so cool. Okay. Um, next up, we've got another 1964 uh, Philadelphia Jim Brown. Uh, this one's to a five. Look at like centering back then. They were just printed so differently, their their tolerances within the factory. So Jim Brown to a five, uh, jumps it about 50 bucks. So the last one was at 105. This goes to a, uh, or no wait, yes, 105. This one is now at 150. Probably one I'll keep. Uh, next up, <clears throat> we have a 1964 John Unitas. It's kind of funny. Uh, within the next couple cards, they go from calling him John Unitas to Johnny Unitas. So on this one, it's John Unitas. You can almost see like the colors, like how they were putting the colors together. It almost looks a little fuzzy, you know, almost like weird 3D right there. Uh, so anyways, 1964, John Unitas, uh, BGS, or not BGS, PSA 3. This is valued at 25 bucks. Next up, we've got... 1960, or oh, sorry, 1959, Tops Johnny Unitas. See how they switch his name right there? Uh, this one was graded at a 4MC. Um, this one's valued at $60. Okay, two stacks to go. Let me scroll up really quick. Next up. We've got a 2014 Carlos Gomez. Thought this one was kind of cool. Grabbed this one again in the wild as I was a kid. Um, not good. Down on the corners, up on the top. I mean, you immediately see this. And now that I know, understand the tolerances a little bit better about how they grade. Right when I got this back, I was like, oh my gosh. So uh, one cool thing is sticker auto, two color patch. It's super short print, number two out of 10. Um, so... Anyways, that part's cool, but got a seven, uh, currently graded at, or comp wise, 40 bucks. Next up, we got a Kevin Garnett. Um, 1995 Skybox Premium Rookie, Kevin Garnett to an eight. Uh, currently valued at 30 bucks. Next up, we got 93 Upper Deck Anthony Hardaway, PSA 8. This is at $15. Surprised that's that cheap. It's just kind of that junk wax era. Lots of lots of population, but pretty cool value uh, pickup right there. Probably slowly go up over time. This is one I'm upset about. Uh, actually, these next couple. This is a 96. Again, Grab this and some packs as a kid. Upper Deck Collector's Choice. You know, going back through my cards and was like, oh my gosh, I have a Mariano Rivera rookie. Got it to a seven. But again, you look back on it, kind of soft corners all over the place. Um, but still pretty cool to get a Mariano Rivera and just go back and look through the cards and see that you had that. Sent it in, took a gamble, got a seven, valued at 20 bucks. Next up, the infamous Derek Jeter. Um, what was this? The 93 Tops. Uh, did not do good on this. Completely swung and missed. Um, I mean, you look at the centering and the edges and everything, and it looks fine. There's just such a high pop on it that, you know, um, there's better ones out there that are probably literally perfect. So anything, I mean, I guess it looks a little thin over here on the, on the right. A um, little thicker on the left. So... Um, this one's currently valued at 30 bucks at this, at this condition. Next up, I remember pulling this. This is again, one of like this kind of era was one of the first ones that I pulled with, uh, with, you know, auto and patch. This is a 2007 upper decks elements, Cal Ripken, um, short print too, to 99, um, game used Cal Ripken junior auto, pretty sweet, uh, valued at, or uh, graded at an eight. Uh, online for about $150. This is pop one. So there is, um, you know, I was trying to use some comparables for the the amount of, you know, other cards that are similar for him with, 
with patches, with autos, with the same serial. Okay, what do we got next? 2008, Tops, Max Scherzer, update and highlights to a nine. I was actually surprised. I mean, Max Scherzer is one of the best pitchers in baseball right now. Uh, valued at a, or graded at a nine, 150 bucks. This one was cool. Had to send it in just because I pulled this and it was a one of one. 2010 or seven tops moments and milestones. Manny Ramirez, one of one, but man, issues all over the corners. So got an eight. Pretty cool though. Red one of one. I think this was the first one of one I ever got. Um, valued at 50 bucks. I think I was trying to find some similars for Manny Ramirez that were one of ones. Uh, obviously pop one. Uh, next up, we got a Bill Ripken, Billy Ripken. This is the infamous 1989 Fleer card. Uh, the FF error, as they call it, with the little uh, slogan right there on the end of his bat. Uh, this is a cool card. Going to keep this in the collection just because it's almost an error card. Uh, this is valued at $160 at a nine. Okay, next up. We got Fernando Tatis Jr. Uh, this is from the 2019, uh, complete set. Got it to a 10. That's pretty cool. Tatis to a 10 on his rookie year, 125 bucks. Okay, next up, we got a Vlad Jr. Uh, 2019 tops complete set. This is the fielding variation to a 10 valued at 50 bucks. Thought this one was cool. It's a 2009 Upper Deck SP Legendary Cuts. Short print, Ernie Banks. Just thought that was really cool. And just seeing that old school gray memorabilia piece right there. So um, at a nine, I think this obviously, or not obviously, but this is a pop one. Um, so it's just kind of funny no one was sending these in, uh, but valued at around 50 bucks. Uh, now I start to get into, or no, wait, yeah, some more kind of junk wax era right through here. This is a 90, uh, 1990 Fleer Sammy Sosa to a nine. This is one of his rookie cards right here, but I'm surprised that this is only valued at $15 for a Sammy Sosa rookie. Uh, here is where I completely swung and missed. So we need you guys to maybe help out in the, in the comments on this. This is a 1990 Fleer, just like the Sammy Sosa, but Dave Justice, rookie, a four. I mean, when I'm looking at the centering, it looks really good left to right. All those corners and edges look spot on. Under the lights, you can only see so much in a slab, but I don't see any dings or issues. A four. I mean, I'm not expecting on this era to get, you know, great, but I would have thought at least like an eight. So real surprised on this one. Anyways, I learn. Okay. Um, next up, we've got uh, 1959 sandy koufax love this uh valued at, or graded to a four 140 dollars current comps next up we have a 1966 tops sandy koufax value or graded to a five 125 bucks Next up, we have a 1966. Oh, same card. Same one. Uh, first one was a five. This one's to a four. Uh, drops it to about $110 for comps. Look at no top, very little right, and all the difference in centering. That's how they were cut back in the day. That's why if you can find a nine or a 10 in the wild or online, wow. Wow. Um, okay, start moving into some more modern stuff. 2020 tops, Bowman Chrome, Kyle Lewis. We love Kyle Lewis up here in Seattle for the Mariners, and he was Rookie of the Year. And this was kind of cool because it's uh, it's the Chrome, and it says Rookie of the Year favorites, and then he ended up getting it. So this is to a nine. 
uh, only valued at twenty five dollars out of nine. Really surprising, and then it's a pop thirty eight. Super low. Okay, but I'll be selling that if you guys want to jump on that. Twenty five bucks. Uh, twenty twenty Panini Diamond Kings Kyle Lewis rookie to a nine. Love the look of this too. Uh, pop two, 20 bucks. Uh, and then this last one is also Diamond Kings, but this is the artist proof, I believe. Yep, and this was to a 10. So it's kind of cool. It shows artist proof. It's a uh, serial number down on the right out of 49 to a 10. Um, this one's valued at $100. Pop one. Super cool on that. Probably going to be keeping that one, though. Uh, next up, we've got a 2019 Topps uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr., the batting variation, to a 10, valued at 55 bucks. Okay, we're almost there. One stack, two cards left over here. <clears throat> Let me up to move my spreadsheet really quick. 2017 Topps update, Aaron Judge, rookie, to a 10. Valued at 50 bucks. Uh, we have another one from Aaron Judge right here. This is to a nine. Drops it to 35 bucks. Okay, last stack. Here we go. Uh, a couple more Aaron Judges. I've got the update right here. This is the throwing version to a 10. 50 bucks, and then same one again to a 10, another 50 bucks for value. Next up, some more vintage. We got 1958 Topps Warren Spawn, PSA 6. Really cool uh, uh, photo right there, uh, valued at $70. Next up, we have a 1959 Tops Warren Spawn, graded to a five. Love that picture of how they wore their hats back then. Uh, 55 bucks. Uh, this one's kind of cool. It's a multiplayer from back in 66. Tops, Koufax, Don Drysdale. This was the National League pitching leaders, graded to a three. Only valued at $10, though. That's a good vintage pickup if you guys want it. Um, next up, we got a Roger Maris. 1959, the white back variation to a five. $125. That's why I love this vintage stuff. If you can get it in okay condition and grade it, it's pretty sweet. Um, this next one's awesome. 1965 Willie Mays. Rated to a four. Really good condition for a four. Uh, this is valued at $175. Another Don Drysdale, 1957. This is his rookie card, which is pretty cool. It's, it's at a three, valued, uh, graded at a three, valued at $100. Okay, and I think after this card, we'll start moving into a lot more recent stuff. So this is the last vintage, 1959 Willie Mays. It's called Mays's Catch Make Series History. You know, his infamous catches it over the back. Graded to a five. Uh, where are we? $200. Uh, okay, now I think we close this out, maybe the last 15, 20 cards with some modern uh, to round it out. So 2019 Panini Don Russ Zion. This was also one that I completely swung and missed on. Um, I have no idea. It's like this and that Dave Justice. I just have no idea. The funny thing is I bought this for a penny, one cent on eBay like a year or two ago. Um, so whatever it's valued at is a lot more than, you know, it's a, it's a gain. I just, you know, you look at this and not thinking it's going to be a 9 or a 10, maybe. Um, at 8 at the worst. So something was obviously super off on this. Uh, but it's currently valued at 20 bucks. 
Next up, Ja Morant. So I bought both of these each for a penny each. So this Ja got it at a for a penny. Uh, got a nine on this. It valued at 60 bucks. Okay, next up we've got 94 uppers, Upper Deck Collector's Choice Jason Kidd to a 7. Not good corners. You know, again, just taking some risks, trying to see see what these kind of come back at. Uh, valued at 10 bucks. This next one's pretty cool for us up here in the Northwest. 2003 Top Series 1 Felix Hernandez, number 50 out of 50. So in a sense, kind of a one-on-one. -on -one. It was called the Silk Condition, or sorry, Silk Collection. Uh, valued at a nine, or graded to a nine. Uh, valued at $50, pop one. Okay, last maybe 10 or so cards. We've got a Tino Martinez, 92 Don Russ. This was his rated rookie at a nine, 40 bucks. Now we start moving into some fun stuff uh, for basketball. I guess there was a couple more vintage in here, uh, or I'll call it junk wax era, I guess. 89, uh, Fleer, Michael Jordan, to a nine. Was really surprised on this. This is cards growing up. You know, they're in the plastic binders and the sleeves. Would have thought maybe a little lower on this for the age. Uh, getting an old 89 Jordan to a nine, 125 bucks. Here's a 92 Jordan to a nine. Also, very surprised by that, 50 bucks. This is probably my favorite one uh, that I graded. It's the Metal Collection. How cool is that? Just sparkles in the light and just that pose right there, that little fadeaway jumper. Uh, I was surprised, all three of these. Oh, and also the baseball one from earlier. Just all my Jordans got nines. Uh, this is at $125. Probably one I'll keep, though. Okay, we got 2019 Chronicles John Morant to a 10. There's the Phoenix. It's a cool product. Uh, this is at a 10. This is valued at $75. Bucks. This was my first CEH last year. RPA out of 99 Rated to a nine. And this is pop one, uh, valued at 50 bucks. Next up, we've got a Justin Herbert. So these were all starting to be my first two us, my first Herberts, my first, you know, all, all of this class at this point. This is right before I was sending it in. So Justin Herbert, Mirror Blue, certified out of 75 to a nine. Um, this was, this is valued at, let's see here. Uh, there's only a pop five at $250. Okay. Uh, another CEH certified to a nine, $40 out of 399 uh, Pop one. You know, again, this is 40 bucks. This is not a card I would send in again. It's a cool card to have, but not something I would grade. Uh, here's a Tua certified to a nine. Also probably one that I wouldn't send in to grade again. Again, that's a cool card to own. Uh, pop four valued at 50 bucks. This one's pretty cool though. A Tua, the rookies to a 10. Love how that one shines. Uh, this one's valued at $180 and there's 28. So again, super low pop on that. Here's another Justin Herbert, 2020 Panini Don Russ to a nine, red press proof. This one's at $135 uh, for a pop of 22. Another Justin Herbert, Don Russ. This is not the red press proof, just the, the base version uh, to a nine, 110 bucks. Okay, I think it's like five cards left, maybe. Um, looking at my spreadsheet. 2020, Chase Young, Don Russ. This was my first one of his. Rookie to a 10. Uh, pop nine, 120 bucks. 
Uh, this one's funny. The only reason I sent this in is because it was such short print, but again, one I would not send in nowadays, especially given the price it is to, to grade. Uh, certified Jeff Saturday out of 10. Super short print, number five out of 10. There's got to be a Jeff Saturday fan out there. So if there is, let me know and I'll, uh, I'll send this to you guys. This is valued at uh, 50 bucks. Pop one. Not surprised by that. Uh, DK Metcalf, certified. Uh, we love our Metcalf up here in Seattle. This is to a 10. It's that cool teal, mirror teal uh, parallel. Uh, 20 bucks. Pop one. Here's one that I thought was really cool. There's going to be a Steelers fan out here who wants this. A Juju uh, Smith-Schuster. This is kind of that press. It's a gold press-proof die cut out of 25 to a 10. Uh, only 20 bucks and pop one. Uh, two left. Carry on Johnson. Another one I would never send in probably anymore. Um, to a nine. Auto out of 49. Thought this was kind of cool. Mirror signatures. Pop one, 20 bucks. And the last card, just a Jordan Love, but my first one of him at that time. Uh, graded to a PSA 9, uh, low pop, 23, uh, $85. It's cool. Jordan Love, you never know what's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers out there in Green Bay right now. So this could be the next big deal, uh, the next wave out there. So... Anyways, that's my submission. Long video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Current value on this is like 7,800. Uh, so I'm going to be probably keeping 10 or 15 cards out of this, which probably takes out about $1,000. So I'm going to be selling the rest. Um, really fun experience though. Hope you guys enjoyed. There'll be some more videos coming up from me and Curtis in the next couple weeks to show off some of our big singles that we've been purchasing. So anyways, leave a like, subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks.